everybody. Welcome in the next episode of Court of Basketball Coaches. Today with my great friend Igor Petrovic, we will little analyze man-on-man defense, how we can develop our players individually and like in a team defense. Uh, in the first part, I will little uh, talk uh, about all of the details about man-on-man defense individually and uh, in team defense, theoretical, and uh, I will try to open little uh, the eyes of coaches, a uh, little new vision maybe. Uh, and uh, after when I will finish uh, this, after coming Igor Petrovic, how is working from the preparation period, uh, beginning until end of the season with his uh, teams. And of course, uh, he will share with us a lot of practices what he is using. When he will finish this, uh, after Igor, uh, I will share with you some of my drills for uh, defense, uh, what I am using with my teams. And when we finish this, after we will talk about Irish basketball, the women national team will play the European qualifier uh, again, and the men national team on the last weekend won the uh, small country's uh, European uh, championship. And after we will talk about the Serbian men and women national team. So we will just now, we are waiting for Igor to connect and we can uh, we can start. Uh, I think that uh, we will try to share maybe new thinking, maybe you will see uh, some drills and maybe you will not use the same drills but you get an idea because this is uh, I think the most important about uh, sharing knowledge in uh, basketball that maybe you get a new idea and that uh, you are somehow using uh, with your teams because you can't do that you like the drills from an NBA team, from an Euroleague team, what they are using. Uh, always uh, what kind of quality of players you have about uh, that is the most important what you will use and what is the demand in that youth age category and the demand in senior category and of course uh, in the beginning I will talk a little about from under 12 until under 18 by age groups coaches what should need to teach in defense what is uh, what is a must to do even if somebody has uh, five trainings ten trainings weekly or two or three trainings you need to have time and I will little explain for you how I was working in some countries where I had with senior teams only two three trainings in a week it was top division but uh, in some countries the courts are a problem yes perfect perfect now it's great i said uh, all about uh, our topics and how we will uh, go for the viewers so i think that uh, we can start but firstly i would love to introduce you that how i know uh, you are the serbian coach who won the most awards in uh, ireland and that is why after the topic men on men defense individually and team defense how we are developing our players we will talk a little about the irish basketball i think am i right thanks very much yes i'm looking forward and uh, it's nice that we can share our ideas and our you know basketball is all about sharing ideas and try to see what's good and uh, give the advice in exchange because i think nobody have ultimate true what is a good or what is a bad basketball everybody have some idea and everybody try to do the best and uh, to promote this game so yes we are here and talking about my favorite subject the defense yes yes and maybe after our ideas and after our practices uh, we will open for somebody's eyes to do something different or maybe uh, he will use just some part of our practices and this is it i think the most important about sharing knowledge in basketball absolutely yes this is a beauty because we all of us got something from basketball i think it's a beautiful thing that we can give it back and share it and continue this uh, until we can this legacy of these beautiful games that can keep us all good and keep us making friends all over the world and still being friends for a long time so uh, Yes. It's a beautiful, a beautiful yes. you know, part. And I think this is the main thing in basketball that we are making new friendships and basketball connects us, not just in other countries. Okay, we are from the same country, but connects uh, people from other continents. So I think that is maybe the most beautiful. It said, I think Bora Stankovic too, that basketball is connecting people. This is maybe the most important thing. 
absolutely not. Absolutely, I think uh, maybe so many friends, so many different places, you know, brilliant friendships, you know, brilliant. And most people I met in the basketball community are unselfish people. They want to share and they want to help and they want to push each other, you know. I didn't discount any, any you know, bad feelings, jealous. Everybody's just there to help each other. And this is one thing that uh, I think keeps moving us forward. Yes, yes. Then my suggestion that I will start how we agree that I will little talk about theoretical to improve uh, how it's going uh, man on man defense individually and on team defense. And after when I finished, after you are coming to talk from the preparation period, how you are preparing your teams, how you are developing your uh, players, and you can share uh, your uh, exercises, your practices. And after when you finish, after I will draw in two to share my uh, practices too. And after we'll talk about the Irish and the Serbian uh, women and men national team. Okay, so uh, now I'm starting. So uh, first of all, we can't speak about defense if we are not going in details what we are expecting from our players individually in defense by group and from all five players on the court. We need to prepare them to play our defensive system on aggressive way, else we are letting to do for the opponent to do what planned and practiced against us. If we want to uh, build a team defense that must to be involved, all of our five players, good teams are learning several defenses and they are using them during uh, on the matches. The reason is that if you are playing one kind of defense on the whole match, the defense will adapt for it. Good teams with good coaches changing defense during the attack, but uh, they concentrate the open. The defense need to be adapted for the opponent's offense. Jacob Bradwich is saying that with a good defense, you can win the match, but with good uh, uh, defense, uh, the championship. So the good offense, you can win the match, but with good defense, uh, the championship. We need to teach our players that they need to sacrifice in defense for the team. Very important to prepare your players for that kind of system in a defense that you have enough quality of the players, that they are able to do it. If we are building a defensive uh, system that we need to expect 100% from the defenders and from the offensive players, less percentage, let's say 70-80%. When our defensive system improved, that, uh, then we can expect from the offensive players 100% in the situations. Players need to be understand what they are doing and need to do, if possible, try uh, something, sometimes uh, to do it on a funny way and on a competitive way. Anyway, it will be boring if you are doing uh, without this every training. Trust is important in what we do. Now, very important thing in defense that we need to kick them out from their comfort zone, beside discipline, sacrifice, enthusiasm, we need to prepare for them in different systems, sometimes with different philosophy and goals in defense. If we are playing uh, against a better uh, team, there is a gap, but uh, this gap we can manage with the, with the team defense and to win. The best feeling if you are beating one team who has better individuals uh, or when you are overachieving the goal, of the team in this season. A good defensive player uh, must have the following predispositions. Proper and good basketball stance, physical and psychological abilities, individual defensive techniques and tactics. Uh, on which way uh, we will defend, where is the hand? This is very important to agree. Uh, how we will reach exactly from very younger players later in the older youth categories. Close out defense. Uh, today, very important that how I see in many countries, uh, close out defense coaches not spending enough time and happening uh, a lot during on the match. So we should need uh, to practice a lot. Defensive team tactics. There is fast break defense, secondary fast break defense, uh, what is transition defense, defense open systems in the set play, man to man defense, press, uh, pressing defense, zone press defense, what is now not the topic, but there is. And there are closed systems uh, defense uh, when it's happening one third on the court. Uh, in the set plays, uh, combination defense, zone defense, matchup defense, what is not this topic, but there is. And multiply combination defense, team defense against uh, inbound actions. The first thing is pressure on the ball. Always need to stop the player with the ball. Always important to do, uh, to not let that the opponent uh, can do what they planned. 
The methodology of learning, the basic man-to-man -man defense based on the practice situation, one to zero, with an emphasis footwork and balance control, one-one zigzag movements, handicap defense, one-on-one -on -one managed situational game, two-on-two, three-on-three, four-on-four, five-on-five, and for example, shell drill is perfect for teaching. And now very, very important defensive activities by age groups. Now I will go from under 12 to un under 18. At under 12, basic defensive stance parallel and diagonal, defensive movement, defense on an offensive player who is without the ball, defense before and after the dribble, box out and defensive rebound. About tactic man-to-man -man defense, there is pressing and defensive transition. From under 14, uh, technical and individual skills and tactical are the same like in under 12, just we should introduce helping to and defending the screen. Under 16, help and recover, low post defense, man-to-man -man defense with full helping, introduction in defender rotations, group screen defense, defensive transition, introduction in zone defense and zone press defense, and in under 18, you are doing everything. Group tactic uh, defense in relation to the fact that offenders have an advantage in outplaying only with actions can defensive players successfully defend themselves. This cooperation usually comes down to helping uh, one or two defensive players who endanger. Uh, group defense tactics uh, involve uh, different ways of cooperation between two or three players depending on the nature of the uh, offender's activity. Group tactic in defense against fast break the cooperation of two players within the system defense against the fast break must often needed in the second phase of fast break. In the final phase of the fast break, two defensive players can be horizontally and vertically. I prefer uh, vertically and then the defender uh, at the back will move after the first pass uh, on the player with the ball and the, all the defend and the defender in the front will move backward between two players without the ball. Uh, group tactic in defense against transition offense, the cooperation of the players in the defense against uh, transition offense comes down to the attempt to the defensive players to establish a good position and control of each offender as soon as possible in the end of the transition offense. After that, they should be ready to react correctly to the actions of the offender, whether they are expected or unexpected. It is important that the players know the opponent's basic way of play in the end of a transition offense. They must be ready to defend various cuts, takeoffs, and screens performed by offenders with strong pressure on the player with the ball and making it difficult to transfer the ball uh, other offenders. Mistakes can be that uh, defensive players are slow to establish defense players make mistakes in defense against screens. The players pay all their attention to the ball and not for the trailer too. Defense against pass and cut and give and go. Uh, here is defense uh, against uh, handoff, uh, basic types uh, against uh, screen, basic types uh, of defense against pick and roll over the screen without help and other players step out, hedge, push and distort the screener, trapping, early trapping, ice defense, side switching, drop coverage, bump off and how we will defend the uh, mismatch. Very important part, low post defense front and from the side and some other variants. And of course, uh, boxing uh, out. Classing pressing and pressing with the corrector. It is very important that this pressing to make from uh, under 12 uh, to start that your players are uh, used for it. And now I will not speak about combination defense because we are speaking about men on men defense, but of course there is after uh, the zone defense too. So now I said uh, all about this, what you should need to prepare. I, after uh, when Igor finished, I will need to talk how I am trying to manage when I have weekly two or three trainings to put all and what the club like strategy can do that maybe will be a different coach next season, but the team will be able this to get all of it from the youth category. So now uh, Igor, your worth. <laughs> perfect, perfect, very good. Now the word is yours. So, so let me. Yes, yes, yes. The best board. I'm sorry that I not have it. Uh, 
I need to buy it when I'm in Serbia. So now the work is complete. How you are uh, working from the preparation period and to share your uh, drills. Yes, thanks. It's a great introduction. You meant you you mentioned a couple of keywords that I I asked myself and I have repeat the same same questions year and year and year. I 20 years of coaching now and. Uh, Sometimes I feel like a parrot, you know, I repeat myself so many times that uh, I don't know anymore. But uh, one of the key words is time. The coaches never have a time, you know, it's always more time, more time. In Ireland, I, I encounter probably even more because we are really restricted on time here. But it doesn't matter how much time coach has, they always, uh, they always hope to have one more training session. There's always one more, there's always something else to do. It's always ongoing work, you know. Uh, great uh, the thing about, uh, you said you different age groups. Uh, and the, I choose this topic because no matter what uh, age group I'm doing, the seniors, I'm repeating the preseason same, uh, same methodology as do with the, with the beginning kids, uh, with, uh, with the, you know, young underage teams, because uh, I want them to introduce them to my system to basic things in the beginning of the season. And a uh, few key things are there that they need to learn is that individual responsibility that come with the defense. You know, they really need to understand that, that uh, it's their responsibility. If they get beaten, they need to correct that. They need to use the fouls. Many players are smart. They don't want to use their fouls because uh, they want to be in the game. And, you know, but they need to learn to make mistakes. They need to pay for it. You know, and they, they, uh, and the other great thing about uh, defense is uh, team chemistry. You know, the best way I feel that, especially in preseason, to start to develop the the team chemistry is by by defense because they need to understand that nobody likes players that don't play defense. You can be the best friends, you can be the best scorer, but if you don't play defense, uh, your friends won't like you very much because you keep them vulnerable. You know. Basketball is a team sport, especially in defense. You don't need to be very talented. Defense is all about rules. In offense, you need to have imagination. You need to have different sets of techniques and everything. But in defense, you need to stick by the rules. You need to be disciplined. And you need, you need to give 100%. So there is no excuse not playing good defense. You know, I know some people can't uh, you know, always give everything. But as I said on the end, if you can't make it, make a foul. This is also part of the game. Uh, what I normally do in the beginning, as you said, mentioned, the other thing is the uh, defensive stance. And uh, one thing that so I won't go into many details, but the first thing I try to teach them is uh, difference between the uh, difference between a defensive stance and a sprint, change of direction and change of pace when they play in defense, because when the player is going with the with a reasonable pace, sliding is acceptable. But as soon as they pick up the ball and go fast, you need to pick up, you need to make a sprint. So many players, especially underage, they have a problem distinguishing between the sprint and a slide. So they need to find the difference. And for most of that, uh, I use the, the drill, the full core drill. They start with the, with the picking the ball. There's diagonal drill, they're going diagonal. So they're going first, they're going slide. When they come down, when they pick the ball, they learn the difference when they put the ball over the head, they can come closer to the ball. Then they pick the ball, then it's a sprint. So they learn to, to, to run close to the player, to try to beat them to the spot and to be in front of them to uh, stop the progression. Then again, they go back to the slide. So 45, 45. So they go slide, sprint, slide, sprint until they, 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 they get into the, the system that they need to. They need to change. Nobody caught anybody sliding. You know, they they they, they quickly do they quickly learn that and then to use to jump off the ball to the ball and stay close to the player. This is basic because I I normally start because of condition and everything. I, I start with a full with a full core drill, let's say three, three times 24 seconds. I try to time everything by the by the time on the court. And when we finish that, then we then we move to the basic uh, uh, body position. 
they need to learn how to react when the when the player put the ball over the head, when they're in triple threat position, or when they're ready to drive. This is the thing that they cover. They need to know when when the ball is over the head. They need to come out in the close out with the hands up, trying to interrupt the pass. If it's a, if it's a triple threat position, they must. Again, they need to stress they must come out with their hand ready ready to for that shot. Even if it's not high, they need to have a hand on the shot. They have a chance to that the player change the change the angle of the shot. And if if it's on a drive. They need to make retreat step. Normally, we said man-to-man -man basic uh, rule is directing to the corners. So your foot need to, your your toes need to do direct to the corner of the court, and you need to try them and not uh, let them to the middle. But first drill, what I do with them, it's a basic uh, pass, 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 basic one-on-one uh, -on -one yes. drill. Just to put when a little more up, the viewers can see. Opa. Yes, little more up, yes. Sir. Little more, yeah? A little more up, that, that, that they, the oh, viewers can see. Yes, yes, now it's good. So the pass goes to the, under the basket, go to the wing, wing pass to the middle. So defender now need to go with the ball. Most of the players, they start playing defense when they don't have a ball, only when player receive the ball. You need to... <laughs> They need to go with the ball. So as soon as the ball go, they need to make the movement. So now that they're making a sprint to the ball, they need to make it, I always say, one-third sprint, last two or three step, chop step, with the hand up ready for the close out. And then we have that uh, distance, arm length, a little bit more, or half length if they're really faster than them. So we work a lot of that. Uh, well, I work offense and defense, but we won't get into the offensive uh, tactic now with them, but mainly what I find, uh, one thing that I find interesting here, that uh, coaches are talking about teaching players to be between the player and the ball, which is a huge mistake. Defense needs to be between the ball and the basket. Defender needs to be between the ball and the basket with their chest protecting the drive. Because when they go between the player and the basket, ball just go and then they don't so I teach them responsibility not to be beaten on the first step. And also it's very important to develop the individual individual tactic in defense. Same as offense have a tactic, defense also need to have a tactic yes. as well. When we master that, then we move opposite. So from the middle, pass goes to the to the wing, and then we have a player running on 45 degrees, and which is a very important that I teach the players to run to the ball, to jump to the ball, not to go to the player. Mainly they have a bad habit running to the player. They need more time. And also then they open for the back door cut very easy. So if they just play normal deny pass with the ball, with the hand on, on the pass, it's enough. They can slide back if the player receives the ball. And also always to be the nearest hand to the ball. Most of the time, especially younger players, they find it easier to go with the further player from the ball, and then they turn in the back to the player, they jump out of their position, and then they are open to easy layup and easy basket. And what I try to uh, always tell them, your job as defender is not to steal the ball. Your job is to play defense. You know, when you try to steal the ball, it's a, it's a situation like in Las Vegas. Maybe yes, maybe no. So if you, if you want to go, I said, if you want to go gambling, you go to Las Vegas, you don't play basketball. You play basketball, your job be in a correct position, try to put the pressure on the defender. This is a, a basic. Then, then from them, I'm teaching them uh, put position. So when they're de 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 defending on 45 degrees, they must be in the parallel the diagonal stance. So they need to direct player to the corner. And what is a big, big mistake for everybody, after the first dribble, most of them making retreat step away from the ball and yes. opening the lane for the players to drive. Instead of making a step forward, closing the lane and pushing yes. them away from the other players. So I spend uh, a lot of time with that. I will share you one, uh, one drill that I do a lot with that uh, second part of defenders play uh, defense with, to a player without the ball. So I'm going to share you now one drill that I do a lot in the 
in the preseason. So once you cover and you explain that what is your basics requirement for your system of defense, you move from from one on one on the ball to one on one without the ball. So we're gonna I'm gonna just quickly share. We're gonna have three lines. We're gonna have top line. Can you see that? Yeah. Sorry. Yes, yes. Just to put the more up the board. Okay. Yes, now it's good. Three now good. Yeah. Passer. We have offense, defense, and a pass. We're gonna show you now the, the pro progression of the drill. So it's a pass, pass, and then sprint, sprint, touching the line, and then we have now opa. So we have. From the half court pass, the the player near yes. to the half court is defender. The other player is offense, and the third line is only a passer. So after the pass, the to the one to the defense pass to offense, offense pass to the passer. They're both running to the baseline. Yes. They're touching the line, and now we create a position. They're in defensive triangle. So we have two guns now. As they say to shoot two people. So now we have see the player, see the ball. And this is uh, really for me a uh, hard work, and really for me this is uh, essential for them to go through them to the all the technique following the cutter, seeing the ball, seeing the player. When they have, when they pass defender, off offensive player, when they pass the half of your body, you change in your head, you're looking on the other side. When they go under the basket, they, you must push them with your back to push them, and then when they're going outside, again you move in your head. You have your hand and make sure you are again one third to the player, two thirds to the ball. Doesn't matter what position you are, you always need to have a space. You can be stuck to the player, and most important, you must have them in the contact. See the player, see the ball. So, cutting that, and this is really good, make them to run down, make them to touch the baseline. And soon as they, soon as they uh, turn to the ball, they need now to the more exercise, they're going to have more experience. If the players are cutting behind the back, to pushing them and make contact. Don't let them to cut easy. You know, defense is nothing easy, it's nothing fancy there. They need to fight, they need to make sure that they don't get the ball where they want it. And I work with the, in the preseason with all the position for one to five. Everybody need uh, everybody yes. need to work with it. You know? That is very important. For everybody need to know because you know, especially position one, I always said to my point guards. You need to know one, two, three, four, and five. Everything what you, they know, you must know. Position five doesn't need to know. They need to know. They know. They have enough to apply just to remember what they know. <laughs> yes. Uh, people just let them to remember what is necessary. And uh, this is important to learn to see the ball, to be ready to talk, and to not let them to cut, don't let them, especially face cuts. Face cut to the basket is no. This, I'm not a big fan of punishment, but I punish everybody for these things. Everybody run, and I hate that I was a player. I hate the things, but need to be done. Sometimes I think I'm too soft, but they they need to be. Uh, uh, then, uh, with after finish that with one on one on the ball, one on one I move, I move uh, two on two, three on three, and transition also one on one full court. Uh, they need to they need to learn uh, a lot. Especially we have a situation when the guards are beaten, and then they're free to the basket. You know they need they need to to learn to come back to be there, and when to make a foul. You know this is one. Especially in Ireland, I find it's a big part of uh, coach. They think making foul is 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 a, is a wrong thing. It's a bad thing. I know maybe you know they change the rule of the basketball intentional foul. But I think it's essential to understand when it's your team and it's your mistake yes. to make this foul. Need to know how to make. But what's happened? Ninety-nine percent of the people they play defense full court. They're good, and then on the end they make foul in the basket. My friend, yes. why you didn't make the first half an hour ago? Yes, of course. <laughs> you know, it's a foul. It doesn't, you know, doesn't make it's not football. It's not this I'm teaching for my senior players too. That uh, that that uh, I'm doing the practice that man. If you are out and if you are feeling it will be a basket, then you need to make a foul on the half court. Yes, but now the rules it can be unsportman. <laughs> what to do? But if I tell them make the foul, make the foul. What do you care? What foul yes. it is? Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> this is not your job. Your job is to, to say what, what we agree. Yes. And yes. if I yes. say, if I don't, if you want to philosophy, you go to the university, you of study course. philosophy, and uh, it's good. I will uh, show you one more drill, which is uh, also transition one on one and covers all three things close out, jump to the ball, as you call the corrector defense, and then changing changing uh, concentration from, from being in offense, going back to defense. And it's, uh, I like the drill because it covers a lot. Okay, hope, uh, hope everybody can see that. This is a position we need, we need the, uh, we need the four players in a drill. Three players, everybody's active. So need to just to put up, yes, yes, now it's good. Now it's good. Yes, yes, now it's perfect. First goes pass from under the basket to the wing. Yes. From there we have a sprint and a chop, as I said, and we have our close out. So the pass goes to the wing, it's a sprint, close out with both hands, chop last two steps, make sure. And most of the players, no special on the wing, on that fake, that if you go too fast, they're gonna, it's gonna be drive past in a dunk. So to avoid that, please make sure you slide, you be in a totally control. After that, we have a second important thing. Pass goes to the corner to the 45. Now the defender from the closeout, okay, is jumping to one third to the player. Two thirds to the ball. Now he's uh, in denial position. Yes. Now when the when this player passes the ball on the other court, now he's jumping to the be in the middle of the court. Now he's a corrector. See the player. See the ball. See his player. Okay. Now important thing is where to wait for your player. Many players don't know, and they were not explained to them. The key, the edge of the key, is where you go to help. Not before, not after. This is the end. You don't go anywhere further. You don't, because if you go below, it's gonna be foul in the basket. If you go further, it's a layup. So, after that uh, correction, this, uh, they wait for a couple of seconds to, to learn the position. He drives to the basket. He comes out, he comes out and stops. Okay. And the ball is then going back to the 45. Okay, and then both players, the player that was defense, now become offense and is going for the ball. And player that was offense, he is now going to try to stop the pass. And now they're playing one on one. This is very good because keep concentration. I do it in 24 seconds. And also, uh, if you work on offense, then you need to limit them on two dribble, one dribble, and things like that. But this is good for offense and defense and cover all the three aspects of the game of the one-on-one. -on -one. Close out. Uh, your, now again, it's your decision. Are you going to have the hand on the pass? You're going to have your shoulder on the pass? Or you're going to, if, if you're preparing the game for the seniors, if it's not a good shooter, you're just going to drop in the key and let them, and let them receive the ball. Now, this is the details we, we don't have, have time. But basically, this covers everything. Also, uh, for that, uh, concentration thing, I have one-on-one -on -one drill, one-on-one -on -one drill with a coach on the, on the free throw line. He has a ball. The two players are on the edge of the key. Yes. And they're going, let's say, with two feet jumping in and out of the key on your name or your whistle. You're going you're gonna to pass the ball to one of them. Okay. He becomes offense. The other players immediately need to contact and be in one on one position. After, after the layup, if they score, they are offense again on the other side. Okay? So now we move into the full court defense and we're moving to one of the, one of the important parts of it that I try to work is the, the uh, beginning, beginning of. Uh, Defense, this is a close out and box out and defensive rebound. This is what everything starts. So uh, 
they first what I teach them, then it's uh, everybody think box out, box out, and they turn around, look around. Three things that are crucial. One, it's find the player. So make make the make the contact very important. Find the player. Second is the box out. I don't mean holding and what everybody lazy players mm. like to do. Make a foul, holding it from behind. No, get your elbows, make a position, go low. And the third thing is go for the for the ball. Yes, when the ball is touching the hoop. The players they like to touch the ball with their eyes. They don't like to put the hands up. But I use one very effective drill. I'm just going to shorten it here. It's basically three three men weave to the middle without changing lines, and I I start. Especially young players, tell them we go for the right layup. So after the layup, the player that made the layup is offense again going on the other basket. Two other players are fighting for the rebound. Whoever catches the rebound is offense with the other gentleman. And the third one that did nothing, he must run back to defense and learn he's never going to catch that player on the end of the court with the layup. And only his fault was that he didn't want to box out. This is for the layup situation, different because we know value when players miss the layup, how it's easy to receive the basket on the other side. And the other value of this is that they need to learn dif uh, different uh, box outs because small player point guard can yes. box out the full player with their back to the basket. They must learn the boxing out small to tall, it's face to face and need to try to catch him as far from the key as possible. So it's a proper fight. You see where you find him, you, 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 you know, sometimes hold him a little bit, some, but you don't let them go near the basket, and then you box out. So they need to distinguish, there's no saying when you point guard, point guard box out, or point guard forward guard. The other, the other part of this drill is when I make on the pass, I, I let the middle player take the jump shot. So now we have two players from the wing fighting. So most especially underage, but trust me, seniors as well, they, they're lazy. They all come under the basket and they look up and they're waiting for the ball to fall in their hand. Again, I said, soon as you see, soon as the, what did they taught us? Soon as the player has the ball on the chin, if you're not in a box out position, run back to defense. Then you're not gonna do anything. So, I teach them, as soon as the ball is there, they need to find the player and try to fight for the position. And after that, again, they're opening, they're opening the, the pass break. We work a little bit often, but, you know, the angle of the pass and play the runs, most of them run through the middle of the court. It's not the opening opposite of the player, opening the angles. But uh, we won't, we won't go, go there. But this is, a, you know. We won't go into the box-out technique from, from the kids, trying to teach them you know, to play the ball using their body. This is just on the drill, on the training. I teach them, and also maybe somebody find interesting, I have a drill that they uh, very easy. They throw the first, first player in the line, throw the ball against the board, and pass to the, the other player, and the other player goes to the, for, the, for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the rebound because they need to learn to the elbows to be straight when they're catching the ball. Most of the play, even the big ones, as soon as they catch the ball, they put it under and they lose the ball then. Or even crazier, try to try to pass the ball, you know. Baseball or rugby is a different game. So mainly catching the ball, but they're all little things, techniques that uh, we will need a uh, lot of time, a uh, lot of time to catch. So this is before I move to, to two on one and two on two arrest, this is the uh, the main things that uh, that I try to uh, try to teach, especially in, in Ireland, you need to be aware that you don't have a luxury of picking your own players for the senior team. You need to work uh, what you what have. You have. <laughs> so it's very important for them to convince them the importance of defense, important of organized defense, with a set of rules, with a you know communication. I don't mind uh, too much, you know, especially in the preseason, if they talk very good, they must talk. But how the season go and how the season progressing, they should really talk less and less and, uh, and know each other and try to focus, uh, you know. You know, if you start in August, 
you know, by December, you know, there should really no defense and there shouldn't be too much of uh, I didn't know. That's why you talk about combined defense. I uh, try to stay away from that because then we, we get out to this first point that's called individual responsibility. Yes, there's no even there's That is true. Problem. Then you are trying to hide some mistakes, individual mistakes. It's okay, but, then, but nobody takes, no, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. In man to man, there is no, it wasn't me. Your player, your fault. Or if you help all over and your player scored the trip, who did you help? Yes, yes, yes. Nobody. Stay there, but when I told you, stay there and don't worry if they, some made mistakes, this is their problem. You know, trying to help and then, then you help and receive three points, put it in hell, help it. You know, that's why I say philosophy, offense, you know, some players in offense, they have different, and this is okay. Everybody have their, yes, but, but in the different, you have six. there is no place for imp improvising or thinking too much or, uh, there is a set of rules and all, as we all should have said, it's, uh, it's like crew of the submarine. If one person makes a mistake, everybody dies. Same as defense. Everybody work, everybody same rules. And uh, this is for me for the first week, week or two weeks. But with the school kids, we are working the teams and everything. This is, you know, till Christmas. You know, you know I don't care about the games. I don't really worry too much. I don't prepare. You know, with, with young kids, you know, 12, 13, 14, 16, I don't prepare the games too much. I work on my program, I work on defense, full court. Well, what I also work with them, uh, very important, is a full court, uh, two, men, two men passing, where they learn valuable lesson. When they just normal pass, 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 pass to the basket, whoever scored the layup, it's a defense, whoever catches the ball, it's offense. And now they need to learn important things. Two things. If I'm faster than the of, of player with the ball, I'm going to pressure them full court. If they're faster than me, I'm going to sprint all the way to the three throw line and weigh them there. So they need to distinguish who is fast. So this is, you know, both in offense and defense, it's a thing they call individual tactics. So they need to learn and they need to try thinking about basketball. You know, basketball is a uh, lot of things. If you play soccer, you put it in defense, you just kick the ball out of the court when they come near you and your job is done. You don't need to think too much. In basketball, you must think and they need to learn. This is like, I always tell them, this is like a game of chess. White are offense, black is defense. And that is, ask them, you know, who has advantage? White or black? White or black? Who has a first move often. So you as defender need to react on the, the offensive uh, move. So it's going to be ball. We said again, we go back to the beginning. Ball is over the head. It's ball in triple threat. Or in the first step, you need to know what is your uh, responsibility for that. Also, arm length away, a little bit longer. If I'm faster, I'm going to come closer, put the pressure on the ball. Because they watch now too much NBA and nobody plays defense. Or they think he is not a good shooter. So immediately they step back. I said, what do I care if he's not a good shooter? I told you to be there to put the pressure on the ball. He might not shoot the ball, but he will think, what will I do? Will I pass? Will I shoot? When you put the pressure on the ball, he will worry about you, not about his, uh, his uh, options. And also you're pushing the, your post player under the pressure because he have easy time to pass the ball inside. So it's very important for me always to have a pressure on the ball because you are aggressive and you are now, as uh, Professor Nicholas said, it's, uh, you are now offense without the ball. It's not the defense, is offense without. You are making the player to worry about you. Yes. Also, you know, they need to know that what I say to them, help defense or deny defense. If your player didn't get the ball, you don't have a problem. So work hard that he doesn't receive the ball. Your problem only starts when they receive the ball. So once you try to convince them that, your life and your job is, becomes a little bit easier. So I work a lot in this, you know, but said regardless, with the underage, I spend uh, 
lot of time with that depends on the age groups I change and it's vary of the drills and vary of the you know what I demand from them but from the senior players I covered that in first three weeks of preseason I try to have three training sessions in the preseason this is for Ireland you know a little bit Quite pushing, but uh, we are trying because I really need a lot of information to give them and we kind of got Tuesday, Thursday and the Saturday because Saturday is a game uh, game day. Then again, they don't like to train in the evening when we should have a game. They try to prefer in the morning. But okay, better than not. So uh, anybody that have any questions, I mean, we can talk a million days about all this. This is just kind of basic things. I hope I didn't, I didn't overlook uh, you know, basic things that I try to cover if anybody have any question anything you know i'm sure i'll be able to to try to tell you my my opinion that's uh una, did i did i cover it do you have anything else that you like well, to mention well um ju just to mention for example about uh that is what i'm um i saw it before maybe a few years ago because you talked about a lot of close out and for example, uh, in uh, in defense, every detail is very important. And I like very much to follow our professor uh, Nena Trunic. And uh, he said too what I saw in some uh, American clinics, for example, when you are going out for closeout, uh, sometimes you need to put your right hand and sometimes you need to put your left hand up, not what is comfortable for you. Because if I'm putting my right hand and the ball is here on the left, it is a problematic how I will uh, defend for it. And uh, this, is, this is very important because let's say in some country, a lot of times I saw closeouts, for example, they are putting both hands. And, uh, and I think that all what you said, very important to go in details about now we not have time. And maybe because we are talking about Ireland. If player is right-handed, right we put the left hand. If the left hand is the right hand, Try to tease on that from the kids, from the you know rolling the ball situation, and then I put the ball right. They put the left hand, so they 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 try to learn that. But two hands, I think it's too many American influence. Same as they, yes. uh, for example, logic here is that the best stop is jump stop, and the reason is because you can pivot with both feet. I never really try to find out what is the big. Yes. What is the big advantage if you can deal with both feet? Yes. You know, we learn you know, go left, left, right, especially with the kids. It's very, it's much easier to teach the kids uh, two count stop. Yes. Because the hips are not that strong. So if some kids run and then you tell them to jump immediately, they're going to start with waving and losing the balance. Like this, if they, if they learn uh, heel, toe, heel, toe, from the rolling the ball, walking to the ball, then from the passes from the side to know which hand, you know. I work a lot on this uh, footwork, and then the kids, if they didn't learn that, they all think they're traveling. And then they look at you, hesitate a little bit, and you need to spend uh, a lot of time uh, trying to persuade them this is just uh, footwork. You know, there's no jump stuff. Yes, yes, yes. All about what you said, uh, but I agree a hundred percent, and we have something uh, similar um, uh, working. Uh, attitude, uh, all what you mentioned. And now I would share, um, let's say, because now we are already 50 minutes in the live, uh, just few of my uh, drills. Let's say, for example, we mentioned, for example, footwork. This I'm uh, giving uh, for kids two, three circle you can do with uh, two players, for example, that they are here. Uh, they are not uh, face to face, so backs, backs are looking uh, on the other. And let's say, for example, this player need to decide. We are saying going left or right, so need to like concentration and moving in uh, basketball stance. And when is uh, when arrived uh, here in the half circle? Now you are rotating 180 degrees and you are moving in stance here. This player doing the same. And after just like close out, you are running with maximum speed. This is very good, for example, for the footwork. Other, for example, for footwork, for three circle, two players are here. And going in basketball stance here, clapping and going back. This you can do on three circle, pairs, six players, 
when the pairs finish two, three times, going immediately the other player. This is, for example, for footwork. For closeout, I like uh, very much, for example, uh, this uh, drill. That's, for example, here. I am moving pass, pass, three passes, and you are going for one on one. And now uh, we can uh, prepare our players to defend the uh, closeout. If you want to make it harder, because it is, I think, is the uh, best thing uh, to make it harder the drill than the matches, then uh, you are able to develop your player. Now, for example, I am putting here three players with the ball. And I not know which player is going for a drive. And when I stopped and playing one on one, immediately when shooting the ball, coming or this player or this player for drive, or we can do the same drill on this side. And after when the player is shooting, the other two out from the other two players with the ball, one is going inside. This is, for example, never happening, of course, in a match. But uh, if a drill is harder, then it's better uh, for the match. Then, for example, let's go for uh, handicap situations. For example, that we are putting it here and here. Here is the player with the ball. And when I'm going for drive, this player is running, going around the cone and handicap situation. I think this I'm using even with under 12 and sometimes with senior players, you can put on different places the cones and you can put the cones or more behind or forward to be a more better the timing. Uh, after, I like to use uh, this drill very much. I am throwing the ball on the floor. And when this player receives, again, I'm running out with close out and we are going. Uh, I want to shoot, I'm putting the ball on the hand. Then the ball is going on the right hip, then left hip, left hip, like a triple treat. I'm moving with my legs. And after this player going for drive, I need to stop him. And after starting one on one, this is, for example, basic rules to play pressure uh, defense. After, for example, I am putting here four players. And doesn't matter, you can do it in a different uh, way too. Here is the ball. I am making the pass. And this player is going on this one. This player is coming here. This player is coming on two players, between these two players. And this player touching the half court line and going back. So four on three. And this is, for example, one suggestion for coaches who have two or three trainings. I am now, weekly, I am now drawing uh, drills for defense. But parallelly, we can practice offense too. So it can't happen that I just want to uh, practice defense. This is going parallelly, defense and uh, offense. So now that you are not wasting, for example, your time, or maybe in some uh, defensive drills, you can put some, I don't know, um, you want uh, prevent, uh, preventive practices before. And then you not need to lose preventive practices, uh, drills, 10, 15 minutes. You are putting in some drills and you are just uh, sharing the time. And after is coming, for example, um, a very interesting team defense, what I like uh, very much uh, to play, that here are four players, four, four attackers, four offensive player, and only two defensive player. And here is the ball. And now it's coming the first, first variation of this drill. Then I'm going uh, out and receive the ball. I'm going on to play pressure. This defender is moving here. And after this, he can make a pass here. He can make a pass here. And after this player is going out and this player is going back. And you can go for two on two. Now we are going for same practice to be harder to be harder uh, for faster reaction. Now the problem will be that both of the players can receive. So I'm going out and I'm going out. If I not receive the ball, maybe some players going back and back and very fast reaction, maybe this player receiving or this player receiving. After we are going for switching for the same practice. So now switching, now switching going. So, uh, I am going to receive the ball. 
I am here, the defender is coming here, and now we agree that we, we are not giving uh, the center. This player is going here to the baseline, and now this player stopping this player, and the other defender is running here because this player makes the pass. Again, we have closeout, we have switching, we have mismatch. We can do it two on two, and we can do that this to do two, three times. When this player uh, receives the ball, he's going in the baseline too. So there is a lot of things. And let's see the same practice with trap, the same practice with trap, for example, that again, I am receiving the ball, I am coming here, and now this player moved here and stopping the player. So here is the trap. And I am making pass here, pass here. He is moving out. And very fast, the same player must go on the same player. And of course, there is, for example, that kind of we can play how we are playing, uh, how we are defending this low, low post player. Uh, there is a lot of variation. I like very much uh, this uh, drill. And um, let's say I think I said, OK, one more thing just uh, this to see uh, how it's going. For example, we are putting here two coaches. We are putting here two coaches or two players. And we are playing here aggressively, one on one. After three or four dribbles, just can make the pass here. Again, somehow I'm receiving the ball. And again, for the coach. So after three, four dribble, you can put seven dribble because you want first to teach your player to play pressure on defense and try to stop the player, try to uh, steal the ball. And if you want to make it very hard, you can do this drill. You can do with this drill that here is the player and uh, he can make after five dribble the pass to the coach, but you are saying that this defender is going out. One defender will waiting this offensive player who is receiving the ball and you are putting a small corridor. And, from, and just from this small corridor, when going out the offensive player, then he can go to the hoop. So now you are preparing your defender that on small corridor, try, try uh, to stop uh, the offensive player. Try to steal the ball if you can. Uh, of course, this is an advantage for the defender player. But slowly, we need somehow to uh, get in their blood that this is defense. Because uh, how Igor said too, this is the most important thing. Offense, uh, with offense, uh, we, we can't uh, just push and focus so much. So defense is very important, need to play with heart, and everybody must to do what are the strict rules in team defense. So this is some of my favorite defensive drills, but you can find a lot on uh, YouTube. And now, if Igor, you agree, now uh, slowly we are finishing our Facebook Live uh, event. And um, I only worked once. Do tell if, you, if uh, quickly, I would like yes. to, to share. To, to, okay. To okay. 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 I would like just to maybe just to suggest one more drill. Okay. And okay. You mentioned the drill and yes. everything. I just um, I'm going to show you one. It's a uh, three on three. Yes. Transition drill. Can everybody see it? You think? Yes. 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 Now it's perfect. Yes, we can see. The start the two players with the ball. And the player in the middle, they are defense. Two players on the wings and player on the basket, they're going to be offense. Yes. So they're going two people without the dribble, pass, 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 until the end of the court, they do the layup. Mm -hmm. In the moment, when one of the players go for layup, these two players on the wings, they switch sides. So now defensive players need to communicate, find the player and try to make it hard for, for, the, for the post player. Mm -hmm. Sorry, post players are in the middle and under the basket. So they try to have communication, stop the first pass, make it difficult. Okay, if the ball goes in, the middle post player can can move until this offensive floor player crosses the half. So when the player gets the ball, 
there is no dribble, there is no pass. They can only make the pass if two defensive players make a trap. Mm -hmm. If there's no one, and they can't cross, they can't pass before they cross the, the half court. So they now need to have a value of beating the player without too many dribbles, crossing the half, and finishing easy on transition. Making sure that post player is not in the game. Defense, now we our part is to make sure they make, uh, or to talk to make a trap and make a good, good steal, or to stop progression of the ball and stopping the fast break. Which we said in defense, two most important things in stopping the fast break is stopping the ball and stopping the further player from the ball. But uh, this is now another month of work, so we, we won't go there. But yes. uh, I use the drill a lot, and uh, I like the awareness in defense from the first, uh, defense start from the first second before the other players get the ball. You need to be ready. So I, I uh, and if anybody like more about this drill, they can contact me as well anytime, anytime they like. Sorry, now we can. Uh, yes. We can. Uh, yes. No problem. We will continue. And of course, uh, how you said, uh, when we are uh, leading senior teams, sometimes our problems that the players who are coming, uh, maybe they not learn team defense, discipline, strict rules, and then we are somehow fighting with the time how we will uh, push uh, all of their head. And that is what you was drawing, for example, that kind of drill is interesting that you need to focus in a lot of things because in basketball you need on milliseconds uh, to make uh, good decisions uh, in defense. So uh, we finished this topic. Now let's speak about uh, Irish basketball. I worked only one season in the country uh, where you are already there a uh, lot of years. And I'm very happy that uh, the Ireland women's basketball team returned to the top tier with and with the Eurobasket qualifiers, and they will uh, play qualification for Eurobasket 2023. And if I could remember, in the group I, they are playing with the uh, Czech Republic, Netherlands, and uh, Belarus. And uh, the men senior team won the small countries uh, of uh, European uh, Championship. Uh, I must say that I watched these uh, matches on the website live.total.net, almost uh, all the matches, and I am very happy that uh, they became uh, first. But we need to say that in last season, because of the COVID, there were no trainings in Ireland, uh, there were problems, and maybe because of it, uh, some uh, Irish uh, youth uh, teams, national teams, who played uh, challengers of uh, the European uh, Championship, sometimes they had some, let's say, uh, bad result because uh, they not had normal training in the last season. So how you see now uh, the basketball in uh, Ireland? I would love the, to hear your opinion. And of course, I think that you will agree that the women national team, uh, senior national team will play in the qualifiers, what is a big thing for Ireland that they get again this experience. Uh, how I found uh, on the internet since 2009 that they are not playing and uh, how I was reading the men national team uh, still uh, thinking that maybe they will play qualifiers for the Eurobasket too. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a serious subject with a, you know, a serious uh, you know to analyze it seriously. First of all, I really I'm happy about men and women team. Uh, they came out to play. I'm very happy because the fashion ladies team they. They promote uh, some young players that uh, didn't have a lot of space in the senior teams, and I think they, they get the chance and they grab it. And uh, I think they they fully deserve it. You know, the, I know how much problems they encounter, you know, to prepare for that. But they work uh, really hard in the no no basketball season. They they practice individually, and they in very limited time uh, they they prepared. They're very lucky that they found a good sponsor, somebody they will. Uh, they help them to to have everything they needed. To, you know, it's a big difference now we compare the what you know other countries' senior teams need. But I think as as the best as they could in time, they had they prepared well. They 
they showed no respect for anybody really. They came out uh, and played, played, play great games. And, uh, and it's a great thing in a way that, uh, you know, most of them, Claire Mealy, I think she got offered to play Germany in a top league, but uh, she said she wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Well, basketball, she, she comes to play, but just let's leave it there. And, it's a unique situation in Europe. I mean, there is no... Yes, yes, I know. This, this is the problem a little about Ireland because um, uh, I was coaching Claire Melia for uh, one season and I saw that she has uh, that kind of talent that for his, uh, that for his height has incredible speed, uh, fast thinking. Uh, she can play under the hoop but can play a guard too with long distance shot. But in Ireland, you need to fight for it that 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 uh, players uh, maybe will be not like in Serbia that for example I get an opportunity to play abroad and I want to try because I want to be a basketball player. Yeah, so uh, it's good that they and I'm really happy. I think they hopefully the everything all the setups stay. I think they're gonna get again the financial support from the sponsors they need. Yes. And I think. Uh, if they can step forward with preparation and, uh, you know, if the league is going to be quality and these young players are going to have to play, you know, look at the most of these young players, they play in Ireland, they have, a, they have a lot of minutes in their clubs. I don't know if it is, I think it's not that I think something to plan for it, but it's, you know, you don't have a, but anyway, they have a chance to play, they play Super League, they play with the senior players and they have that kind of experience. And they also very, you know, they cheat, you know, they want to fight, they don't give respect to anybody. And I think if they have time and to prepare, it's a very difficult group, as you know, Belarus, Holland, Czech Republic yes, physically. Yes. That will be very hard matches. Very physically dominant. I don't know, you know, physically how they're gonna match them, but you know, it's a good thing to start. Yes. And, and that experience they need, especially these young players. Yeah. Luxembourg, Luxembourg won that small countries, but they have a, they played the senior qualifiers year before that group in Serbia. They lost two games by 50 or 60 points. And, but I, I think they, they learned from that, and I think it was a great experience yes. for them, that kind of. So I think they bring to Ireland. But, you know, the problem is what I see it is sustainability of all this. You know, you know there is no plan what's next and what's next and how we're going to, how there is no, uh, and in general, same as these kids, you know, they come, they, they fought very hard. Results, as you said, they were not great. Again, there's no fault to the kids, absolutely. They, uh, they show what they can. The, the intensity, they see no intensity of the practice, intensity of the defense, on what level they need to be, you know, to compete, to train, to be serious, to, you know, they're great kids and coaches. I think we just need to work there to show them how important it is to prepare, how serious this game is and how seriously they need to take it. You know, it's up to us as a coaches to prepare them and give them opportunity to do that. Not just to think and hide behind, you know, they're too tall, they're too big, you know, to shoot the ball, yes. It's a basketball, everybody shoots, everybody jumps, everybody's tall. <laughs> yes, I know. Yes. You know. But Ireland, Ireland have unique, uh, Many times they ask me, you know, what do I think, what system, you know, they, I, you know, they can look like of Finland and Iceland, you know, they, they made the system, you know, yes. which is very difficult. And with less people, difficult. they made great results, not just in basketball. Yeah, but they put a lot of money as well, they realize they need the money, they put the money in the system, they realize they're going to press, they're going to shoot trees whenever they can. You know, it's very hard to play against teams that all five players are rebounding, all five players are running, all five players are shooting. When you have your convenient team of, you know, one to five with all the positions and everything, you know, you're mismatched in every position. Yes, yes there's so, a problem. All match, you're mismatched. Yes. So I think Ireland, you know, planning wise, going that direction. But every time they ask, you know, it's another thing I said, you know, please find the money. Yes. Without the money, basketball is possible. Yes. You know, if you can do it for cheap, you know, you know, they wouldn't have uh, whatever to say. I, they, I heard a few days ago that Italian budget is 45 million for the, for the national teams. You know, I don't expect 40. I think Serbia is in range of 3 million or so. 
Yes. We probably two million go to senior man, and then I think the kids have underage teams have between 25 and 40 euros per person uh, budget for the day for preparation. And I think they need to look at that as well. They prepare, they have small training camps, two or three days, two or three days. They have some games. Mm -hmm. You know, the position of the games is not uh, good for them because they're playing with a country similar or lower level, which doesn't prepare them. I think this tournament, let's say they went and they were beaten. If they went after that, as a pre if this was a preparation tournament, they, did much, they would do much better in the real competition. Because they did improve players as a players. I don't talk about coaching, but players as a players, they improve after every game and they learn. You know, first game, I think, under 20, Spain, they couldn't even look up the basket. You know, they couldn't, they couldn't hit the, ball, the, the backboard. They didn't see that intensity in defense before. But slowly they adapt. You know, they didn't. So if they have that kind of preparation, if they have money, you know, they're good kids, they're talented kids in Ireland. You know? They are. I'm yes, I can agree. I can agree. Uh, but problem is, everything is very illogical. You know, under 11s train twice a week, under 16 train twice a week, and the yes. senior. Yes. I mean, how everybody can train twice a week? <laughs> yes, you know? this is problematic. But, uh, again, it's a beautiful situation. They want everybody. You know, in Yugoslavia, in all system, we were never interesting in the players they want to play basketball. Yes, we were only interested in the players they can play basketball. Yes. You know, we didn't have time to, you know, to go to the 400 kids and, we, you know, Professor Karalejic and all of them, the first uh, Paranosic, they're the first people that wrote a uh, book about selection, I think, in 1970, because we realized as a communist country with no big budgets, we can't afford to coach everybody. Yes. So let's find the players that we can coach and then let's, uh, let's work with them, you know. But the great thing is in Ireland, everybody plays. You yeah. know, I have a trial for the Irish team. I have 65 or 70 players come, come on a trial because they believe they can play. Instead of me as a coach, follow them, know who, who can play. So it makes me bad because I need to tell some kid, listen, you're not going to make 12. And, I, you know, everybody knows that he won't make 12, but he still comes to the training ready to fight. You know? But... With no money, and there's no accountability. This is the other thing. I know, you know, it's, I speak now maybe, but I think when the parents are paying for the preparation and for the for the tournament to go, basketball is taking uh, accountability from the show. They're not responsible because if you pay the organization for the for the competition, yeah. and they go and, and have expecting something. You've been asking, coach, why do we, why do we go there, Matthew? You know, yes. Why do we have a money? We don't have money for three teams, but let's make one team and let's go and have a good shot yes. on something. Like this, they're watering, same as the clubs, you know, they, they're cutting too many selections on their 11 and 12 and 13. And I always say this is like putting too, too much water in the loot to drink. You know, you know, you need to find what is good. But again, the club doesn't pay, parents pay for it. So again, they become the shareholders of the club. Yes. So, who will play? Everybody needs to play because everybody pays. Yes. And okay, that's the game, okay. But when they come to certain ages, then in the club they're getting edgy. Now they want to know who will play and who will not play because it's important to win. So you didn't explain these kids two years ago, listen, my friend, go and play soccer or table tennis is great. Or maybe you're going to be a coach. Maybe you're going to be a referee. You know, try to keep them in the basketball because there is not too many basketball people. But don't keep them in the club just to pay for the fees. And when they come to 16, when you want to win, you tell the man, now you're not good enough anymore. You know, I think it's more earnest. Tell them two years before that. Yes, I agree. Yes. You know, I'm not saying specifically age group. This is just, uh, you know, basketball, it is late developer game and some kids pick it later. But the point is... Uh, there nobody cares about selection here. You know, they expect the one team to start playing from the 12s to come and play Super League together in, in, in eight years' time. My friend, you know, they don't know the value of selection because nobody's paying for that. Nobody's responsible. You know, if one coach 
you know, win all the games or lose all the games, there's all the same to the club, you know? Yes. There's no planning. Who do we, you know, I have a senior team. We have four, four point guards, but we don't have a post player. <laughs> yes. But they're, still, they're still pushing for seven more point guards to come behind. And then the club start losing the players because they come to overload of the, of the players. You, can't, you know, if you don't have a selection, there is going to be jam, you know, on the door. Yes. You know, there is no, as Professor Nicholas said, once you open the door for somebody to go up, there is no going down. If somebody's under age 18 but start playing Super League, your friend, bring some other kid and let him up. Yes. Not he's taking two spots, one there and one there. And the other poor kid sits. And then there's no progression. So this is a big story, but in general, I'm, I'm happy I think people have a good heart and they want, but uh, they need to take the basketball as a, more seriously and they need uh, to support with the money and try to open a little bit more to Europe. Uh, mainly open is to United States. They are taking basketball from there for years and years. A little bit of European influence, but uh, not enough. I think people, the European coaches, they're here. There is a good few of them. They're being, I, I won't say sidelined, it's a strong word. But I don't think that I maybe, or maybe they just don't think about it, which I think is more, and it may be called these people, say, so listen, you are work here, you are from this country, like uh, Wakem Bantic, the best uh, point guard in, in, yes. in Red Star, won the, won the league. Yes, you know, the former Yugoslavia. One of the best five left-handers they play in that league in that time. He's there four years, you know. Nobody called him, you know, my friend, what do you think about this? Maybe you have some idea. Or some other person, you know. There is people here that, you know, I don't think to follow them and to be blind and oblige what they say. But let's exchange, let's exchange yes. the ideas. You know, let's talk about something, let's see, maybe we can find the middle, you know. They protect their own coaches, but I think they need to open a little bit more to everybody. And it's a, it's a, everybody's game, you know. We love it as much as everybody do, and uh, we just think they need to open a little bit more eyes and, uh, you know, try to be more, uh, open-headed on everything, you know. That's just my opinion. Yes. Well, financial background is very important. And how you said, the selection, well, if you want to, ha want to have a serious work in serious club, without selection, you can't work um, uh, normally. This is very important. And what you said more, that the young players need to get chance. So if there are a lot of uh, talented young players, they should need to get chance in the senior teams in Ireland. And I would love to share with the viewers that I remember that uh, when I was coaching Fort Leash Panthers, you said for me, when you saw that in sometimes in the Super League matches, I started with Claire Melia and May Phelan. Claire was uh, 17 and May Phelan was uh, 16. And you are saying, Mehunor, people here will thinking that you are coming from Mars. Uh, so to get young players opportunity is very important. And if the younger player is just a little weaker than the older player, the younger player need to get chance because after a few months or after a few seasons, that will be a main uh, player. And the young player will do everything for you uh, if get a chance. And young player will always play aggressive defense. But first of all, that player need to accept that first to play defense in the offense, maybe to make screens, maybe to make passes. And when uh, that player get experience and rhythm of the senior league, then to get more chance in the senior team. And that is why important that the women national team is going for the European Championship qualifier to play against Czech Republic, Netherlands and Belarus. Maybe they will be losing with a lot of points, but to see what how they are dominant uh, maybe weekly they have seven trainings, ten trainings, and the Irish girls will have two three trainings in a week. But to get experience, they will be coming stronger for the next yeah, upcoming uh, the championship. Give them a chance. Also, why I told you that is 2009 when I won the national hoop. I had Rebecca Nagel, which is now a player mm -hmm. for a long time and one really talented kid. She, I put her to place cup semi-final and final and she was on the 16th team and I see the people when I put her in the game thinking that I'm crazy they don't know you know young players don't know 
how many things can go but, wrong. But used for it in Serbia. Bogdan Bogdanovic and a lot of players. I, uh, I, I train with Komazic uh, Zadar. He was 16 or 17 playing with the senior team already in all Yugoslavia. You know, that was, yes. you know. But, uh, you know, great thing and I'm hoping that things will, uh, will improve every year. I'm here 20 years and I'm still waiting. I hope one day we will have, a, we will have good basketball here because people that love basketball here, they deserve that. You know? There are lots of people yes. they, with a good heart and they really would, would uh, enjoy that, you know? Yes, and um, people are nice in Ireland and I know too that they want to be basketball better. So we hope uh, all the best and we hope that the season will be uh, okay now in Ireland, not like last season. We need a season after, after a year and a half, you no know, basketball to definitely need a season. Everything else is a bonus after that, you know? Yes. So we'll see. Yes, and let's see now the last topic about a Serbian men and women national team. Uh, I was a really great fan of uh, this last generation, last golden generation for the women national team. So Sonia Petrovic and uh, Jelena Milovanovic, Brooks, uh, Sonia Petrovic Vasic uh, will not play no more for the national uh, team. They played always with heart. All these players were always came for qualifiers, European Championship, World Cup, Olympic Games. So it was something amazing uh, how they were beating many times France, Spain, and, uh, and other uh, big basketball uh, countries. And now uh, this was before in the men national team. And how we can see in the last few years, maybe uh, the, the traditionally uh, feeling and atmosphere in the men national team is not like uh, before. What is your opinion? And uh, my opinion uh, too about the men national team uh, more, that uh, we are becoming a smaller country. We have a lot of talented players, but at the moment we not have so many extra quality players. Let's say, for example, Milos Teodosic will slowly stop basketball. So at the point guard position, we have Vasily and Mitic. After we can have Stevan Jovic like a backup player, but uh, after when, if Mitic would not come, and maybe Bogdan Bogdanovic would not play, uh, for us would be a great a big problem. Before, maybe we had more extra quality players. And let's say that Nikola Jokic third time uh, not able to come and happened that we are not on the Olympic Games and I'm very much sad because I believe if our men national team would play now in Tokyo, we would have a great result. And in the women national team, uh, now maybe we'll play a little more Alexander Tsevendakic and uh, some other players. Uh, I not know what will be in women basketball. Uh, maybe we will have a team that is possible to compete uh, for a medal in the next uh, uh, qualify, next uh, European Championship or World Cup or Olympic Games. But in the, in the women basketball, I not see uh, so many talented young players. Now I am waiting after a few years, uh, Ivana Raza, on what kind of quality will be, because we will have for sure a team to play great defense, but we will miss some extra players like Milovanovic and uh, Petrovic, and uh, slowly uh, some other players will stop after a few years. What is your opinion about uh, women and men national team of Serbia? Oh, we start with the men first. We were actually with the women because we had a great chat in June when I was in Belgrade and I was watching some of the preparation games and before we went to Europeans. I think we kind of predicted uh, that kind of uh, development in Europeans. I thought they deserve it, fully deserve it. I think uh, that was a team with uh, lots of years behind them. Uh, Spain came with, with a younger team, but I think they were also very strong. I thought, I thought Belgium. Belgium is extremely strong as well. Yes, Spain, is strong. Uh, France as well, I thought that they were very good, but I think uh, we have a little bit mental edge over them. But I think this was a reward of all these years since 2011, 2012, yes. when, we started, when it looked like nothing that looked now, especially when the Sonia, Sonia Petrovic came, came and joined the team after all the horror injuries she had in a couple of years prior to that. Uh, 
the deserved it was one thing with the system everybody knew what they're doing uh, uh, problem that we have that for 10 years we we, we can't find the post player yes. for that team you know we won all what we won with the with you know they were very good and Sanja Krenic and all of them and yes. Tiana but, uh, for that for that team to match up the seriousness for other positions we were seriously you know deficit yes. on the, yes. on the team. and and we Tina Krajišnik was uh, very efficient and then and, and she played great great role when i saw her last time four years ago and uh, steva was the the coach when we uh, left i thought she was supposed to retire then you know, when i see her back in the team I, you know she did what she can you know yes. you can't blame her she did what she can uh, but the problem is that we don't same as you mentioned the point guards in the man basketball seems to be we're not uh, we are not uh, not strong in women too. Through all the selection, through all the selection, uh, through all the things we do, we can't produce uh, post play. I think it's to mentality. I think the girls, I met a couple of girls of that generation, you know, not to mention the names, but I think uh, they're thinking more other things and that they take basketball as just, you know, pocket money to go through the life, not to do much other serious stuff. You know, mentally, I think they're not there, you know. Even though we have one girl, she was, she's 196, you know. She's, you know, not, you know, not going to name, but she should be, you know, there's not too many players in that, that's, that height, you know. So, yes. uh, I don't know what the problem is. Point guards, we don't have, we wouldn't have Teldosic if he didn't left for Greece and he wasn't allowed to develop and to be what he was. We are too much... Uh, we rely on the system. Point guards are not allowed to make too much thinking. They 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 play the system, and you know there is not too much. Uh, and I think this is the main problem. And then when they go to the senior teams, they don't get much chance. Seeing yes. that all, all the point guards we, we're bringing from 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 different countries, and our our players don't get a chance to play. They play lower competition. We get little little time there, but for the senior results, you know. They need the better games. They need uh, to be part of a better team, to have a better practice, and to have a freedom to play. But normally, with all the results and money, money is now attached to that. You know, it's less and less and less. So it's much cheaper to bring some some more experienced American point guard. They're going to control. They're going to help you. Then to, then to give a chance to some some kid, you know, try to to like Pokushevsky would never get a chance to play in Serbia. You know, who yes, Navarro would never. You know, Navarro would never pass the selection with that shot he had, you know. You know, they'll say, he, no way. So, uh, we'll see. We still have Mitzic. Yaramas maybe mature more now and play Euroleague. But also, he's a combo guard. You know. You know, in Serbia, somebody's going to pop, pop out, definitely. Yeah, somebody we will have, come. Yes. You know, we have a lot of hungry kids trying. We, you know, basketball is still very popular. Problem is that this uh, system of FIBA qualification doesn't suit us because we don't have a time for operation. We don't have time for, you know, we, we change over 50 players in the last yes. three years. Yes. You know, and we need the most, definitely we need a professional coach that he will be in contact with the players. He knows what's going on, who will play, who wouldn't play. Yes, that is very important. Is, yes, to be a full-timer. Uh, yeah, so somebody like Patrick, I know that he, I probably, you know, he's probably the next on the line, but we, we do the input saved us then. Hopefully he will save us now, but then <laughs> there is no more saving. When they're gone, I don't know, you know. I'm not, uh, coaches are getting chances, they're going to America now, Milovic, you know. You know, so we have one more coach, they're going to have, you know, half time discussions on the half court with the coach and stuff instead of, you know, getting to the players, you know. Like do they you know break a couple of boards, you know, and get them in the face and let them to play, you know, rather yes. this kind of really diplomatical relationship that doesn't really, really work with our players. We don't have. With our players, not working. That is true. You know, it's probably great, and it's probably the way that it's in some modern countries is. Yes. It was easy for Kokoshko to work in Slovenia. They have different kind of behavior. We are only respond to the pressure and to the tension because yes. now. Then the player is so angry that he wants to show to the coach how good is he and how he is wrong. And this is what our coaches are 
are betting on to provoke them, to give them reaction. You know, and this is how we work. But this is us. You know, that's why we could never could never coach anywhere else because the language barrier second, these people don't really care. Yes. You know, the professionals, they play, they work, they're going to give the best. Then 99.99, but this is the, we are sure it's 120. You know, and then you're going to be in trouble if you don't. He went to CSK, have Caroline for the all of them, have three million contracts, you know, what do they care? You know, do, <laughs> do, 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 do you challenge for them or not, you know? But in partisan, when it's a practice, you know, Terence Kinsey or Bogdanovic or they all do the push ups, they all run, there yes. is no such a power. There is no young player, old player, they all suffer. Yes. Well. And you know when, when, what is his always very true, he said, if you train very hard, you're not you're not ready to lose his you know, who is crazy to lose after, you know, going through all this. And then he will tell you, see you tomorrow at six o'clock in the morning. You know, you definitely don't want this. But this is our mentality. So I thought Kokoshko is a brilliant coach. I mean, absolutely. You know. His knowledge of basketball yes. is uh, fantastic. Yes, I agree but, too. Uh, but I think he is a coach, not what we need. You know, more to the dictator and the rest. Yes, and, and, and how we were a lot of years in America, maybe that is working in NBA on this way. But with, not, with our player, you must have discipline. You must sometimes to say something what is maybe not nice. So not, not can be a diplomatic coach. No, no, definitely because we don't, you know, yourself, we only respond, uh, we only respond to this kind of form. We we are born, we grew up like that. Our parents yes. didn't really, you know, more like us. When, when you're in trouble, you're in trouble, and you know, you better make it. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, there's no in that European, you know, well done. We talk when we come home. You know, it doesn't work because we don't. You know, <laughs> I don't think great, but uh, this is how we so. Look at uh, Yuri's doubts. You know, he's trying his best to go to Europe, but every year he's in, in some kind of uh, trouble. Yes. He hit somebody, you know. So uh, I think our coach is Vladimir Mitrovic, see how many problems he has in front as well. Yes, you yes. Know, the player, his, his mentality. Mir Kotskulic, his assistant coach, yes. our long. Yes. Long time president of the coach association. Yes. I was delighted to see him that he had a great Yes, and uh, I am very much waiting next season to follow Mitrovic and also college work because I think with you know, what they are doing nice yeah. things. Also, Milan is going to Zelena Gora in Poland. Yes, yes. He's getting so I'm I'm happy. And my friend Dragan Ikonic is signed for a second year for Boris Banyaluka. Yes, and your friend Emi Yes. So, uh, you know. But they are they are they're in this kind of environment that they can, they can they can go there. But if you go to Sweden, if you go to different countries, people that don't want this, they have life. They on the end of the day, they don't care really. They lose, they win. You know, they might be upset five minutes, but uh, you know, part in the rest time, if you lose the game, you can go out. You can go out the the house. You know. Yes. You know, I only hear this time the Zagorats and them how much problems they have in town. When they go for coffee or something, when the partisan supporters were so yes. angry last year. And, yes, last year was know. very bad. Yes. Uh, they and they get treatment, but also when they win the game, then whole city then is going to them. This is a we are going to extremes. We're going to you know your hero or you're just a dead soldier. There is no there, we don't have the in between. And as a people, we don't have in between feeling. We are happy or we're sad. We're not we're not halves. So it's another subject of. Uh, our mentality in the Europe, it's very difficult, trust me. Yes, yes, so I agree with you. We'll see, and we just quickly to the women. I hope they're gonna, I'm really, really closely watching to see how this tra translation gonna do, how they're gonna, how Marina gonna do this, because if she go through this and make this transition, then really they should make her monument in Belgrade, you know? If she manage this, you know, I know she did great. She, her dad's daughter, you know, she she took yeah. the same system like him, you know, in Yugo Plastica. She does exactly the same, but we'll see. If she do this, she needs the monument in Belgium. Yes, you know, next I think to, uh, Yes, I think We'll too. see. Interesting time ahead, yes. especially for partisans. For the yes. new season, I'm playing for Corona every day. 
because yes. this is going to be partisan is going to be most watched team in Europe, home and away. I and, can sign this. and and I don't know what to say for you because I think maybe I will waiting more big matches in the Adriatic League than in the Euroleague because now uh, Partizan, Red Star, uh, Budućnost, uh, Mornar, Bar, Cedevita, so there, there will be there will be great, great matches. There will be big fights who will play in the final four. Partizan will have fans in any, this gym, in Abba League and in Europe, more than home fans. I, I can sign this now because all the Italy, Switzerland, it's a lot of Germany. There is a tons and tons. Last time I was in Bologna, I was in Berlin. There were thousands of people that traveling all over Europe to be there. So with Obradovic, I can only imagine. Yes, and for Obradovic. And I don't I'm know how we managed to watch the matches in Belgrade because now I'm in Hungary because I, I would love to, uh, so much to see big matches in uh, Euroclub and to see uh, Jeko Obradovic. For me, probably it's going to be Europe games more than the Abba League games, but uh, I can't tell you where to can't wait. It's it's understatement, you know. As one of my friends said, I don't, I still don't believe I'm still crying sometimes in the corner, you know. Yes, and yes. being tough, you know, not too many hard moves. I think maybe maybe we we'll get some. Yes, and you 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 wrote in one of your posts that. Uh, Maybe you are thinking that you are dreaming that uh, Rots came back uh, to our favorite club. I, I brought I brought the paper from Serbia. I put them here, and every morning when I stand up, I go to the press. <laughs> I open just a little bit more time, and I said to my wife, "It's true." And, uh, but yes, yeah, they they work very hard. I spoke to a few people when I was home. You know, it's uh, it's just unbelievable. It's called setup and savage, not to mention everything yes. else. You know? Not to mention players, not to mention anything, just Obradovic, Savic, and there were the roommates in Argentina in 1990 yes. in the World Champions. So, you know, life, you know, goes in the circles. Yes. I can't wait. I can't wait. You know, that's all I can say. So hopefully there in November we're going to touch on that and uh, maybe, I'm gonna eat my, maybe I'm going to eat my words, but listen, you know, I believe. I believe. Yes. Yes, me too. Well, Igor, thank you for your time. It was a little longer uh, what I expected. I think that our viewers will hear a lot of interesting things about man-on-man -man defense. And I would love to wish for you nice season and nice season for all the people uh, from uh, Ireland. And we hope that this season will be much better than the last one. Thanks very much, Rune, for the call. Everybody, if you have any questions, you can ask me, Hunter, and I can send you whatever you need, and maybe. Yes, uh, people not wrote questions, but you can uh, send for Igor or for me, and we will answer for it. So all the best, Igor, and we will keep in touch. Bye bye.